morning. It's a rainy day here in Seoul. There's apparently a typhoon coming and I decided that it was a good day to film 24 hour series. Why? Because, I don't know, maybe it's the rain, the smell of wet concrete that makes me super hungry. And also, there's not gonna be that many people so we don't have to be in line, so big brain moves. Okay, we've reached our destination. So these are like the super traditional ma hua. You can almost think of it as like deep fried brioche in a sense. I'm gonna get the original, the old style. Let's give those a try. I'm gonna have this underneath the center of woman up, whatever that means. It kinda looks like Jewish challah bread, like the knots and the braids. I mean, it's beautiful. What's that name of the like springy dog in Toy Story? Kind of looks like that. It's freaking massive. I mean, this is my face. Twice, twice the size. And it also like untangles as well. Almost like a DNA helix structure. A little chewy and dense, but the bread itself is really, really nicely aerated. Almost this like mochi-like texture. Even though I like bit into it, usually it deflates, but this kind of holds shape really well, which means that the gluten structure is very, very much intact. So the normal like twisted donuts that they sell in Korea, it's coated in cinnamon and sugar. But this one, um, they didn't coat it in anything. But it's still like very sweet and nice. Another pro tip is that you can use it as like a bouquet. Kind of looks like a chicken feet. So this is the next one and it's their classic one. It almost looks like a cronut with all the layers. It's like deep frying a puff pastry and you know that because like all the individual layers that this has as opposed to the first one that I ate because that one was just like one amorphous lump. This one it's all like layers on top of layers and layers. I'm gonna do a psycho move and eat from the center because I'm an only child. Mmm. It's twisting and turning and blistering and frying. This is the exact embodiment of heinous beauty. I mean, it's gorgeous. Like all the little bubbles is super crispy. You know, like the best parts of apple strudel where it gets like super blistered because like the butter oozes out and in high temperature, like it looks like somebody got really bad blisters. This is exactly it. It's so crunchy and it's really good. And now this is like their milk version. I'm assuming instead of putting water, they added milk. So it'll probably be more like brioche. Look at how enforced this gluten is. It looks like you're tearing apart a chicken breast. Call me a classic girl, but I still like the second one I tried the best because this is a little bit too much. Like they have the panko kind of like encrusted as well. I'm assuming like the crispy bits that come up they like coat it in it once and then deep fry it so you get this like really craggly texture honestly it like scraped the top of my mouth so not a big fan but there's a guy over there just with this bottle of makoli um, and his adidas shirt listening to music i think he's just gonna like down it and then this is the walnut cookie I've made a couple cookie recipes in my life and the qualifications of a good cookie recipe means it needs to look like the bottom of your feet when you haven't moisturized in a while. You know, like, you know what I mean, right? Cracked and dry, but crumbly. I just like it when it looks like the tectonic plates are moving on planet Earth. Okay, I'm gonna have my cookie. It's good, but you know like, how sometimes like walnuts have kind of a fishy aftertaste. It kind of tastes like that. I'm gonna be honest, you know, like I am not gonna bullshit you when something tastes bad. This is not just sparkles and sprinkles here at Doobie Doobop. I'm not a big fan. I'm gonna give it to Kevin. And then this is their donut version. It's very squishy, almost like a deep fried mochi. Mmm, this is good. It's soft and chewy. Red bean filling in the center. 
It's really, really nice too. The type of sweetness that kind of comes out of this, it's really subtle. As you chew more and more and more, the sweetness of the gluttonous rice kind of like starts coming out. I didn't heat it up when this is warm, like it would be legendary because I can imagine the rice cake to be like really ooey gooey, almost like stringy, but even cold, it's really good. So everything has been pretty good, but it's been really oily and I kind of need some like broth or proper lunch to kind of wash it down right now. So. Conveniently, we're gonna go to Songhua Dosakmyeon for lunch. Oh, I love ordering off of an iPad. It feels the inner iPad kit in me. I'll get a Xiaolong Bao. They also have Morning Glory. It's like my favorite, favorite thing on earth. Hoba roll. It's so good. Like this reminds me of when I was in New York. I used to go to this place called Xi'an's Famous Noodles. And they would have this like chili oil, like Mount Lamb chili oil noodle soup. And it used to be one of the two hangover soups that I would get in New York. One was BCD and then the other was Xi'an's Famous Foods. And this is what it exactly like reminds me of. But then the balance of the spices is even more nuanced and better. The cumin, the pepper, the coriander seeds, the black pepper. Like the oil itself is so, so fragrant and aromatic. The balance of all the spices is just legendary. Mm. The food just keeps like pouring in. Boba roll first because it's nice and hot right now, just like you. Wow, do you see how glossy this is? Perfectly coated in the sweet and sour sauce. You can always bank on Chinatown to have the best food. Boba roll is Chinese style sweet and sour pork that has been deep fried and coated in this like acid and like sugar syrup mixture. The acidity kind of like hits you and like you feel it in your nose as soon as you bite into it and then the crispy batter crackles in your mouth as soon as you put it in and it is incredible, incredible. And you get this like very special type of fry. It's potato starch. You can see like all the air bubbles inside. This is when all the water like evaporates out and trying to get out of the batter when it hits the hot oil. So you get this incredibly like airy batter and it is so good. I'll try the Xiaolong Bao now. Interesting that it comes in cups. I like mine with a lot of ginger. Like this. I'm gonna like eat it like oyster. I understand why they put it in these cups because they're so juicy. The dough that covers the Xiaolong Bao, vinyl thin. It's like so thin that as soon as you move it, it almost like explodes in your mouth. Like I can't even taste the dough. Okay, I need some veggies because I'm not gonna be able to poop tonight if I don't get some fiber in me. And Morning Glory is literally my favorite, favorite vegetable on earth. I had my first Morning Glory when I went on a trip to Cambodia with my mom and we had it almost like every night. It was the only thing that we ate. The sauce is made up of salt, MSG, garlic, a little bit of pepper, dried chili pepper as well. Mm. What I really love about Morning Glory is that it's so crunchy. Crunchiness comes from the structure of the stem. The inside is empty. It kind of looks like almost like a macaroni in a sense. And that's what like kind of keeps it very, very crunchy even after it's cooked. Asparagus shrimp dumpling. I did not expect the color to be pink. Almost looks like a face. Not really. It's a tiny bit fishy for me. I'm very, very gooey. It's good, but not my favorite. It's so much. What a feast we're eating, what a feast. It's happiness time.
so I brought this home because it was one, I was really full, and two, I missed home. I really want to just enjoy this at home. Ooh. Okay, so this is the coconut wee wee on, and it has all these like toppings. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Grass jelly, silicon tofu, ube like mochi, tapioca pearls, more mochi, red bean paste. Looks really interesting. I mean, texturally, this is like frog heaven paradise. Mmm. Full disclosure, I took a fat nap after <laughs> eating all the foods because I think it was quite heavy and oily and probably also a lot of MSG. Not that it's like bad for you, but I like literally just passed out for an hour when I got home. And I honestly didn't know if I could eat more, but I can. Jelly. I got the coconut milk base and I love coconut. And you don't really get that many coconut desserts in Asia. And when I do get a chance to get a coconut dessert, I will always, always go for it. It's like nothing like I've tried before. I thought it was gonna be very similar to boba, but it's also really different. And I'm really surprised that I can I can eat this much right now because I was so full earlier. Durian rolled cake rolled around. So it's a rolled durian rolled cake. There we go. Super stinky. It smells like ginkgo tree nuts, baby shits. Actually, the smell is like really rancid. Makes me really not want to eat it. But I know that I will enjoy it. Oh, but the smell is so off-putting for me today. Oh. Oh man, this is actually really good. What's really weird when you eat durian is like the first bite, it's like unbearable sometimes. And then second and third bite, you like can't smell it afterwards. You become almost like immune to it. Oh, the wonders of the physical body. The durian is infused in the cream, so you don't get like the stringy parts of it, but I like this one better. The Wee Wee On, definitely a winner. I really wanna go visit Taiwan. I went when I was young and I haven't visited ever since, but like, as a lover of food, I gotta go, you know, gotta go. at Lamb Skewer Street, which means that there are rows and rows and rows of Lamb Skewer restaurants just on this street. I think there's over 30, which is crazy. Like you would think that because of competition, people would diversify, but no, there definitely is that big of a demand for lamb skewers here in Korea. Why? Because it's so delicious. I'm gonna take you to one of my favorite joints, the Myeongbong Shabu Shabu and Yangbochi. It's one of the oldest joints here in Konde. So uh, let's grab a beer and eat some skewers. Oh, okay. So the reason why I love, love, love this place, like lamb skewers, as far as it goes from one restaurant to another, I think like the quality is pretty similar, but it's the side dishes. It's like what you eat after you get the lamb skewers. It's really good. My favorite here is definitely the mapo tofu. My favorite mapo tofu of all times. Yangkochi hanara, gakdong chibirang, mapa tuburang, tomato gerantangirang, gungibap 이렇게 주세요. So usually the ones in the center are the ones to finish cooking first. So when you're done cooking it, put it up top and then the ones on the outside, you also bring it to the inside so that it starts cooking as well. So I'm going to teach you how to eat the lamb skewers. Should you be doing this? No. You do not want to deep throat anything that's steel and pointy other than a terminator stick. So you push it down like this so that you don't get your throat completely punctured like this. And then you dip it in this spice mixture. Sit on. And it's a mixture of sesame seed, citron peppercorn, chili flakes, some cumin and garlic flakes, and a little bit of MSG, salt, and sugar to make it that extra nice. Wow, wow, wow. Mm. I mean, it's such a smart system. It's a rotisserie that usually takes somebody to always like 
flipped the meme and they mechanicized it like this. I honestly think that this is the future. What's actually funny is when I was in college, I wanted to bring this machine to the US. <laughs> what? And I, yeah, and I was like, I'm gonna become a gigantic lamb skewer like franchisee. Like I'm gonna bring this machine to the US. Yeah. Anyone wants to partner up? You know my Gmail. Okay. I don't know why we haven't opened the beer yet. Like a, a bottle opener? Yeah, I, I'm a pussy right here. It says, oh my fun, but I said I read it as, oh my fuck. <laughs> okay, there we go. What's happening? It talks. <laughs> There's a fucking speaker in this bottle opener. Chinatown, I'm telling you, it's the closest city to like Blade Runner. I always think about it, like everything is so futuristic, especially on a rainy day. Like it reminds me of Blade Runner, one with Ryan Gosling, you know, 2049, not the original one. These are now all finished, so I'm gonna bring them up. Ah, Oh yes. Chicken gizzards that we're gonna also rotisserie up. Cheers, doobies, and cheers, Yejin. <sighs> the reason why I come to this restaurant, Mapa Tofu, and I like to like kind of mash it in. Tofu is like really flavorful. My guess is that they boil the tofu once to kind of firm it up, but in salt water so that it flavors the tofu from within. They use a mix of fermented chili paste as well as a fresh chili. It gives a deep flavor as well as the pungentness of like fresh chili as well. I really want to recreate this recipe. And when I say that, it means that it's really, really good. And when things get a bit overwhelming, you take a bit of the tomato and egg drop soup. Uh, and it just suits you. Perfect compliment. Okay, so the gizzards are done. I'm honestly running out of space on this table. Dip it in the spice mixture. Oh, it's good. It's really crispy and it bounces back and it's really chewy. It feels very, very much like the perfect bar snack. You know what would be really good with this? Garlic. I'm gonna blow your mind. For one dollar, you get this plate of garlic, and you might be wondering, like, what do you do with this? This is what you do. No, you don't peel it. Yejin was asking me earlier, why do you do it skin on? It protects the garlic. It was very hot. But see how it like slide it out? Like when I was skewering it in initially, I was having like trouble like getting it through because it was really like, you know, harsh and hard. But now it's like super soft. Mmm, so sweet. Tiny bit of spiciness and bitterness. If you're ever in Korea and you go to lamb skewer place for the Korean and you pull out this trick, they'll know you're OG. Okay, konde also means that it's... <laughs> I'm gonna be completely honest. Gondae is actually like not my vibes at all. But then the only place that I would go to is like Fun City. This one. I mean, it's just like Dave and Buster's. This looks hella sketchy.
So I got a tanghulu. It's a grape tanghulu called a shine musket. That's like super popular in South Korea. This is actually my first time having tanghulu, so I'm pretty excited. Mm. Really to be honest, I was such a hater because it's so big on TikTok. Like everyone tanghulu something, and it gets. Super viral. I was like, this doesn't even look that great. At most, it's just like sugar covered fruit, but that's really good. It's actually really good. It's so like crispy too, it doesn't like stick to your teeth. Super crunchy. <laughs> okay, so I got a bunch of different flavors for Kevin to try out. You'll get a shot of him trying out the tomato, blueberry, another type of grape called kobong, and cherry. I do think this is four dollars worth. It's actually really good. Good way to end the night. Wow. That's great. That's great. Good night. Bye bye.